Okay, so I'm making this afterwards, uh, and it's going to be the intro. So, hey guys, uh, we're going to talk about this. Right? So we were in Huntsville. We wanted to do the Tesla camp mode thing, and then uh, use the boombox to call for moose so that uh, uh, Sylvia can take some photographs of said moose. Now, when we got there, it was cold. There was an extreme cold alert for Huntsville, but I figured, you know what, it's Canada. This isn't uncommon, especially overnight. During the day, it can be a high of minus 15 and a low of like minus 20 something. This isn't that bad, especially consider you go up north, everything is 10 degrees colder. So this isn't anything crazy. This is normal average for Canada in the winter, even though this is extremely cold, right? Now, let's get started. Oh, you should preheat your car, right? Okay, here's some talking points. I'm just gonna read this. We live in an apartment, not a condo. The closest level two charger is 10 minutes away by car. So we live north of the 427, and the closest one really is the one by Ikea in Burlington and that's still 10 minutes by car. And that one has half of the ports not working or, or plugs, I mean, not working and it's busy most of the time. So really you'd have to go there after hours and then leave the car overnight, which is not nice. So we ended up going to downtown Lakeshore to, to do that because that's our best option because you don't want to supercharge all the time. So we do that like once a week on a, Saturday evening into Sunday morning and then we pick it up with a second car, right? So that's what we end up doing because we live in an apartment. We already knew that going in. We're talking with Burlington Hydro. There is one closer to um, the 407 area that uh, has a level two plug, but it's for testing purposes only. Never mind that. So I can't preheat the Tesla because we live in an apartment. That doesn't work. So when Tesla or all you Tesla fanboys say that you need to preheat your car, can't. Live in an apartment. Fact of life. Moving on. Capri management company refuses to have even a conversation about EV charging. We've tried three times throughout multiple years, even before we got our Tesla. That's why we were delaying our Tesla as long as we possibly could. We finally were uh, forced to take delivery. Now we're complaining. Tesla's great. We love the car. Um, but we're holdouts for the 4680 battery, but we were forced to get a delivery in December or lose our, lose out and then pay another 10 grand because that's how much it went up in price. Um, so yeah, so we can't possibly have EV charging anywhere within walking distance of where we live. That's just the reality of life. It can't be done. Next, uh, because we live in an apartment, and we keep like at least we keep it in the garage so it's a few degrees warmer than outside but it's close to zero degrees so freezing um whenever we drive it so the regen is reduced and the heat pump works so whatever range it says you have there's less than that because you're using your range to drive the heat pump so that's a fact of life and as i was talking about earlier we live in canada it's cold for the winter and affects ev range it really does so Teslas are better than most other cars out there, even the earlier Teslas with the resistive heating elements, but it's still a consideration. You can't just be a mindless zombie and get into one of these things and expect it to be like an ice car where the range that you say is the range that it gets. Like my Audi, it's precise. If it says you're gonna get 450 kilometers, you're gonna get 450 kilometers. It's better on the highway, obviously, but it adjusts based on your driving. Next. Um, I'm not dissing on the Tesla. We got this because this is the best choice of any car available in the market within our budget. Uh, you'd have to take our Tesla away from us, from our cold, dead hands. We love it, so don't get that wrong, okay? If we if Tesla didn't exist, we'd probably get a Porsche Macan. Um, it, the one with the six cylinder, the one with the um, slush box automatic, uh, transmission, not the four banger turbo. We, my partner doesn't like that. Sylvia doesn't like that. Next, autopilot. Uh, 
a lot better than anything else. Everything else is crap by comparison. It sees things that even I have a hard time of seeing, especially at night with the oncoming glare of the headlights driving for hours. It makes your eyes and head hurt. This thing was able to deal with them for the most part. Yes, with high beams, sometimes it freaks out because you can't see and it tells you to take over or speed is reduced, that's fine. But this is way better. This is, I would rather have it on than off compared to my uh, S3, the autopilot, sorry, the lane keep assist on that is quite terrible. I'd still have it on and off, but a lot of the time the patches and the roads, it gets confused for lines and it tries to throw me into a, a guardrail. I don't like that. Tesla, only one time I got confused about stuff, right? Okay, uh, next. So this range here, when it's if you have 430 kilometers, you don't. You have closer to 300 or, or even less than that, that were 250. That, that's just a fact. So when people tell you to switch to this to power, okay, sure. But then what the hell is up with that, right? If you're going to display something, at least try to make it accurate. Like, what the hell? So we use the uh, the energy meter and the, the trip planner to say when we get to our destination, what is the range that we will have left? And that determines whether or not we need to supercharge on the way. So when I say you need to be a little smart about having EV, that's what I mean. Um, right, so the drive from Huntsville to Burlington uh, on one tank, I, I can do that on one tank with my S3. I have, we have two mountain bikes on the roof rack. We have a car loaded, loaded to the roof with camping equipment, like the both of us, a dog and everything. It's, it's full. We have stuff everywhere on the, on the floor of the front seat, even with Sylvia sitting on top of it with, with our dog that only gets one of the three seats with all the stuff we have, the car is sitting low and it still makes it on one tank with a bit left over, I get there with like 25% left, right? So that's just my expectation, is that no matter how badly loaded the car is, when it says it's got an X amount of range, it's very close to the X amount of range. And that's just uh, an ICE car. When you go to an EV, you have to make adjustments, okay? So next. If you even if you are using the energy meter and the navigation tells you how much range you're gonna have left, if your Tesla says you're gonna get somewhere with 20% range left, just assume it'll be closer to 15 or even 10. I think 10 is a little extreme. It's actually pretty good with the estimation how much you get have left, but uh, expect at least a 5% drop, especially over longer distances, just so you're not surprised. Um, now, given that, even in the winter, if you add up how much you pay for supercharging, it's still significantly cheaper compared to an ICE car to fill up a Tesla uh, in the winter. Even, right? Now, let's get back to this, the reason why I'm making this video. I expect to have heating in the car no matter how cold it is outside. There are zero excuses. Don't tell me this is a beta. This is not a fucking beta. This cannot occur. If this occurs to multiple people, roll back the damn updates. This is this should be an emergency hotfix. We are not in California where you can worry about your other company and then come back to fix this. You need to fix this now. There's like a 24 hour period where this is acceptable. Anything beyond that, you're gonna have people with issues. I was driving from Huntsville, you're gonna see from Huntsville, all the way to Maple, Ontario, which is just north of Toronto. So that's almost three hours in cold. My feet were freezing and numb, and that's dangerous because I need them to brake and accelerate. So that, this is not acceptable. If you know this is a firmware glitch, roll back the damn firmware, right? So I'm just saying, because with so many Tesla owners affected, it's not acceptable that this hasn't been fixed immediately. This, like, love Tesla, but this, this, this is like a, a, a startup mode software company that thinks it's okay to live with bugs. It's not. 
Okay, so here we are. I'm coming back from Huntsville because um, I'm tired of being uh, cold. So it's minus 26. Yes, it is ridiculously cold. Uh, this has been on for the past hour. I've been trying to play tricks with it, trying to do whatever. Um, Sylvia's here. Um, she's freezing. She's in there. She has a heavy duty uh, feather um, uh, parka and under a duvet blanket. Uh, we were planning to go uh, camping in Algonquin Park using the Tesla, using the camp mode. Um, this isn't safe. We're going back. My hands are numb and freezing. So uh, yeah, this is an issue. This is now blowing cold air at me. So now you decide to work. Wow. Wow. Here we are at the, uh, I think this is the Innisfil en route southbound. Sorry, this window's all not very good. This is partly because the rental car has the summer wiper fluid, I think. It's like a, a, a blue. Uh, this freezes almost immediately on the windshield. I had to buy my own. I mixed it. It's a little better, but... Anyway, it's minus 20. Why is it working all of a sudden? I visited three supercharger stations on the way and headed to me's. Why now is it working? Why? Why? Okay, so I had you guys literally 10 seconds ago. I stopped the video, I heard some clicking, the climate went cold. Now we're back to this. Awesome. Well, I need to go inside for a wee before uh, I go back home. We can't continue the trip like this. This is ridiculous. We're in uh, Vaughan now. Yeah, it's minus 16, 425, about... Uh, a third of the way from the Innisfil en route to here. Oh no, actually it was already back in Innisfil. Never mind. Yeah, my feet are still freezing. Um, I'm at the supercharger. I am supercharging. And it is. Oh, well, it's not. Cold, but it's not warm either. Oh, let's do auto. Let's see what it wants to do. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, I don't have heat as of yet. washer is slow yeah oh there we go you got that yeah there we go so because of this I instead of sleeping in camp mode I had uh, caffeine and uh, I am driving home that is the end of our Algonquin trip with the rental Tesla uh, to be fair this is not the fault of the rental company. They provided me a nice car. Yeah, some few issues. There's some, the, the rear tailgate has a rattle when I drive over small bumps and whatever. And then the, the, uh, the door, like, look, I, uh, I'm gonna turn this on. I push this button, door doesn't open. See this, I push it, door doesn't open. Our brand new Tesla, no problem. This, you have to hold it and then you have to really smack it with your with your elbow before it opens but whatever um, at least I have a rental Model Y can most people can't say that um, nevertheless uh, let's see you guys want to know what software version it is software version da, 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 da. 
maybe that helps some of you. Maybe it won't. This is the non-FSD version, but that makes no difference. The version 11. Uh, I've seen online people had this issue. People have had this similar issue back in 2013. Um, but yeah, in December, a whole lot of people in, uh, in like I think Saskatchewan or something like that, when it was like minus 40, had this issue. Um, honestly, at the end of the day, I don't care why this is happening when my wife slash common law partner whatever you want to call it she's my life partner anyway um when she's in jeopardy of hypothermia because we're in the middle of nowhere and it's like 12 midnight on a saturday and nowhere to go to warm up because everything is closed this is dangerous so yeah, minus 16, still not working. Um, I don't believe this is a sensor issue because it works intermittently. Like, yeah, this, this isn't good. Oh look, it's working now. Amazing. Now that I'm not that far from home, and most people know how long it takes to get in Huntsville. So here's another design flaw. I use wiper fluid. This wiper fluid wipes the middle, but it doesn't wipe the outside where the camera needs to be uh, cleaned. So the camera stays dirty. Love the fact that it comes from the wipers. Don't love it so much that it doesn't clean the camera. 